<clears throat> right. Go Hi, ahead. friends. Welcome to the Sleep Forum. My name is Ruth Marion, and I'm your host today. I am on a mission to bring the topic of healthy sleep to everyone. And today I'm here with a really hot topic. We're going to talk about anxiety and insomnia. Um, obviously, we all know the pandemic has taken a real toll on our sleep and on our mental health. In fact, um, there's even a term for it called Corona Somnia, I believe, which oh, means um, because, because, because that people are getting lack of sleep because of the pandemic and, and mental health is just skyrocketed. Um, with that, you know, sleep deprivation in the United States is is actually epidemic. I mean, it's crazy. It's one out of every three people suffer from a, a sleep, you know, in probably insomnia. So um, there are many ways that we can deal with sleepless nights, including prescription drugs and over-the-counter medications and supplements. But today we're going to talk about a different way. Today we're going to talk about a drug-free solution to insomnia and, and a lifestyle change. So Without further ado, I have on with me today my friend, somebody I met many years ago, and her name is Allison Francis, also known by Anandi. And Allison um, is a an Ayurvedic, hope I said that right, coach <laughs> specializing in sleep and stress. She's also the creator of Sleepology, um, a wellness consultant and a senior yoga teacher and so much more. So I brought Allison. Nope. I'm sorry. I brought Anandi. I'm going to call you Anandi, <laughs> I you, brought Anandi I on the show today to tell us why and how she created Sleepology. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here talking to you again. <laughs> I know. It's so good to see oh, you. Um, yeah. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Um, We have a lot to talk about today, so I'm going to just jump right in. And I'm going to first ask you to tell everybody your story, your journey. How did you, um, about insomnia and how you came came to Sleepology? Okay, well, basically, by the age of 27, I was suffering from chronic insomnia. Uh, It was triggered by a divorce, uh, often insomnia, is triggered by something but I was always a light sleeper even as a child I remember if my father had the tv on I would like dad I can't sleep can you turn the tv down or if it wasn't dark enough the room or if we'd gone to stay somewhere I always seemed to be a light sleeper and lots of things anything would just disturb my sleep but anyway by the age of 27 I was already suffering from chronic insomnia And it went on and on and on. And it probably went on for at least 10 years, if not more. And my mother gave me one of her sleeping pills and it just made me feel even worse. I felt like I'd not had any sleep, even though I'd been unconscious for a number of hours, because obviously that's what sleep medication does. By the way, that's all it does. It's like an anesthetic. Uh, That's another story, but that's why you feel so horrible in the morning after, (laughs) after sleep medication. I didn't want to continue going down the sleep medication route. And I started looking around, stabbing around in the dark a bit, as everyone seems to do when they want to heal naturally. What we have a tendency to do is drive ourselves into the ground and then expect to heal naturally overnight, which of course doesn't work because it manifests over time. I then decided that, okay, well, I was always into health and I thought, well, yoga is probably something that would be really useful to me. I'd already been teaching fitness before that and I started practicing yoga. But when I was practicing that type of yoga, it wasn't really doing it for me. It was Iyengar, for those of you who know what that is, but it's basically very physically physically focused, posture focused. There's no real breath. There's no real philosophy. You'll never find that in a class. It's always just posture and blocks and bricks. And I learned a lot. My teacher was wonderful, but it wasn't what I was looking for. And I still wasn't sleeping. I decided, okay, well, I'm going to go to India because that's the birthplace of yoga. And there must be something more to it than just this. 
I went on the map and went online and I went, I'm going to go there. And I went to stay in an ashram for six weeks and it was transformational, transformed my life basically, because I discovered the breath, which after all those years of practicing yoga, had no idea about the breath. So that was a revelation. And also Ayurveda and lifestyle. That was a whole transformative experience. And I started working with the breath in particular as well as lifestyle Ayurveda, but I really, really found changing the way that I breathe and doing breath work was transformational. It was really revolutionary, actually. And the other thing over time is what I realized was that it's a process that you need to go through because healing anything actually is holistic, although we're not used to that in, in the West. We're used to targeting a symptom and then just it's all better but really it's only masking the issue if you target a symptom with a drug or let's say sleep with the drug then of course you're going to be unconscious but you're not really dealing with the thing that caused the sleep issue in the first place and that thing will continue to manifest even though you're still going unconscious every night you're still manifesting that and it'll actually probably turn into something a lot, a lot worse. Ayurveda is something that's so commonsensical. And I realized that you have to deal with certain things in a certain order. Everything starts with the root of the problem. Why are you not sleeping? Why? What is it? And it's different for many people. It might start in a similar way, it might start with a stressful event or uh, an emotional problem or, or whatever it is, but it will always be around the nervous system. And then that will upset the whole digestive system, not just the physical digestion, but the mental digestion as well. And then you won't be absorbing nutrients. And then the other thing is, is because you've got no energy and you're completely on the floor, you start to actually get a bit depressed. And fulfillment is the last thing you can even think about when you're so exhausted. You just, you just want to go to sleep. Ayurveda therefore takes you on a process. So my sleepology process is finding out why you're not sleeping, what the root cause is, working out what you need and how you need to bring yourself back into balance, managing the nervous system, which is resilience of the nervous system, and then digestive system and then the um, feeding of the mind, the body and the soul. So you know, that's a very, very condensed version, but I really got the, when I went to India, it was just transformation and revolutionary and it just opened my, opened my eyes and my mind to what holistic healing is all about. Because I didn't really understand it until I really went to India. So um, let's talk for a minute about um, yoga and meditation. And actually, you know what, I'm gonna switch that up. Let's talk about your typical day. When you get up in the morning, what do you, what do, you do? How do you, how do you, how do you see, let's see your day. Okay. My day, my alarm goes up at quarter to six in the morning. I whip the dog out for a quick wee, and then I'm on my mat by 6 a.m. or five past six, my yoga mat. And I will then do my posture practice. I will then do my pranayam um, and meditation. And then I'll do, I've got a really lovely uh, bio mat, it's called. It's, like, it's a mat full of crystals and it's heated. And of course, in the winter, I just, after my practice, I just lay on that and have this amazing infrared treatment. And that lasts about two hours. So I finish my practice around 8.15. And then I will have a greens drink with water. So I'll put greens powder in water and drink that while I'm fiddling about. Then I'll have breakfast, shower, and get on with my day. And at the other end of the day, I always eat early. Of course, yeah, sometimes if you go out for dinner, but it's not that often. But I usually try to eat by about 6.30 p.m. And I usually try to eat a bit lighter in the evening. And then I will 
let's put my phone on aircraft mode about 8.30 so that I feel like I'm putting up a firewall to the world. So I haven't got things pinging, not that I have pinging going on my phone, but there's lots of lighting up, you know, those notifications. I need that turned off. And um, I do a little bit of breath work in order to go to sleep because I'm still a light sleeper and I still have to keep myself in balance. And that's relating to my sleep type, which, you know, we might have time to talk about, we may not, but basically I have to keep myself in a very, very good rhythm with good rituals in order to facilitate good sleep for myself. Let me ask you something. Do you need all, to incorporate all these changes into your, like, it, it feels like a lot. Like, so, you know, I'm interested in sleeping better, but what you're saying sounds like a lot of work, <laughs> you know, um, I, I, and, and the kind of personality, I mean, I don't, I, I am personally, I have a hard time meditating or doing yoga. I'm not a sit still person. What do you say to people like that? Um, I mean, okay. I'm probably completely out of balance is what you're going to say. Um, well, <laughs> basically I have been practicing for many, many years, so it's difficult. To, you can't just, adopt that lifestyle because I've been practicing for years. So someone who has not ever practiced yoga, you just start small, incremental things. For example, something as simple as putting your phone on aircraft mode so you're not getting the pinging by about 8, 8.30 p.m., not turning it back on, until at least you're up and making a cup of tea so that you're not actually waking up in the morning, picking this up and start scanning your messages while you're still in bed and not even awake. That's actually quite similar to having a brain sandstorm just for your brain, waking up and just oh, pick your phone up mm -hmm. and then start watching the messages. So you could just start with having boundaries around the technology and mm -hmm. then in the mornings, you could either sit for five minutes and just follow the breath and just ground yourself before you go into your phone and make your tea. Or if you have an animal, of course, you're probably used to going out for a walk anyway. Uh, but not just having boundaries around the technology is a good thing. Obviously, with the yogic practices and meditation practices and all that, you have to learn and understand what you're doing and I know that you said you had a hard time meditating which is quite interesting you should say that everyone has a hard time meditating everyone and meditation is not something you can just go I'm actually now going to sit and meditate and I'm going to have an empty mind it doesn't actually work that way it's got the mind has to be prepared for stillness you can't just sit and go oh no, oh, five minutes, no, my mind's too busy, I'm going to get up and do something. It, it doesn't work like that. You prepare, which is why in proper yoga practice, I'm talking about yoga practice, there's all sorts of other types of practices, even in yoga, there's lots of practices. But if you look at the roadmap that the ancient yogis have set out, they have put things like pranayam, which is breath work, before meditation. So they would go um, um, pranayam or asana, posture, pranayam, and then moving into some degree of meditation. But it doesn't just go meditation, it goes concentration. Unless you can actually keep your mind concentrated on a thing for more than a nanosecond, you're not going to be able to ever meditate. So you have to practice keeping your mind just bound to the breath for five minutes. And it's a process. So I would say you have to be patient with yourself. You need really a teacher or a coach to help you on the journey. And don't give up and think, oh, I'm, I'm not the meditation type. It means that you don't know what you need to do in order to quieten the mind and to understand that meditation is difficult. That's why people don't stick to it because it's not easy. <laughs> so takes practice i mean listen it, it you know it's really easy for us in, in our culture to just pop a pill um you can't sleep and you pop a pill right but um you know what you're saying is a lifestyle change and yeah 
lifestyle yeah. change, but also educating yourself and finding the right resources and don't give up on holistic healing because holistic healing is something that needs to have time to be integrated, but it's so much better than trying to do a shortcut because actually those shortcuts don't really work. They make it worse for you in the long run. So right. then, then you have to get off the medication before you, right. It's, it's a roller coaster ride. Um, yeah. So just really quick to the audience, um, if anybody has any questions, we are taking questions in our chat box. Um, I didn't say that at the beginning, but I'm going to say it now. And um, so, Rebecca, do we have any questions come yet? Come in. Uh, nothing at the moment. Um, but uh, I guess we'll continue going on and I'll just keep monitoring. I, I, actually, I see a question right here. It says, who are coaches? You know, how do we, how do you find a coach? That's a really good question. That came from uh, Mike Brill. Well, basically, uh, well, it's the internet and recommendation, really. It's looking at testimonials, talking to someone and getting a feel for that person in your gut. Do you feel like you could actually work with that person? Does that person resonate with you? Because there's millions of millions of coaches out there. I think it's a case of finding someone who resonates with you, speaks the same language as you, and you feel comfortable being guided and confident being guided by that person. Mm -hmm. And you just have to keep interviewing coaches and looking at their websites and reading their testimonials and seeing how you feel about them. So there's no easy way apart from, you know, having a recommendation or doing your own due diligence about that particular coach. Um, you know, there's another question here. Um, could, could you talk a little bit more about Ayurveda? I'm not sure that everybody understands exactly what that is. Okay, Ayurveda is ancient Indian medicine. And the only reason that many have not even heard of it or don't really understand it is because when the British were in India, they closed the whole thing down. They shut Ayurveda down. They saw it as being woo-woo. They burnt books and they basically made it pretty, pretty illegal. So it went underground because obviously they wanted to bring in the modern allopathic medicine. Uh, and it's now, you know, catching up a bit, but most people go, what Ayurveda? but it's a very, very commonsensical way of looking at things. It's basically saying you can't heal something unless you know what the root cause of it is, regardless of what it is. You need to know why that's happened because you can't just treat a symptom. Well, you can treat a symptom, but of course it's just going to keep coming back if you don't actually look at the reason why it's happened. Uh, and once you've understood why it's happened, then you come up with a strategy that relates to that particular imbalance and all imbalances, most imbalances will be different combination of things. Um, I think people need to unmute, unmute themselves just because, yeah, lovely, thank you. Um, so we need to make sure that you've understanding what the imbalance is and then you have to balance the imbalance. So for example, if you have, let's just look at a digestive issue that's causing a sleep issue Ooh. and the digestive issue is bloating and stomach pain and you might go and you might get given a antacid for that which is completely ridiculous because <laughs> it could well be that you're not producing enough stomach acid but people seem to go for antacids when they've got stomach pain but that stomach pain might be caused by a number of different things it could be caused by um, stress and a constipation, so a drying out of the digestive juices. It could be caused by the opposite. So you have to work out what is going on in the digestion before you can actually look at healing it. So if it's dry down there, you need to put oil and, and more heat into the body. But if the body's already hot, they need to cool the body down. So if you've got too much digestive acid you need to put cooling things cooling types of food in there and that's basically how 
Ayurveda works. It works in balancing opposites. If you've got too much of this, if it's too heavy, you bring light in. If it's too cold, you bring heat in. If it's too dry, you bring wet in. And that's basically how it works. And it happened and it's applied to the whole body because the symptoms are manifesting one of those qualities going out of balance. And you need to do lots of questioning, work out what's going on with that person in detail before you can work out where the imbalances are, which is why when you have an Ayurvedic consultation and, and if you have a sleepology consultation with me, it's an Ayurvedic consultation. Yes. I'll yes. be asking you all sorts of questions, not just about the present moment, questions that go back to what you were what what it was like in the womb you know did your mother tell you anything what sort of pregnancy did your mother have what sort of birth did you have because your issues start in the womb they don't just start when you're 40 mm -hmm. they start in the womb and how you are in there how you come out what sort of life you've had what sort of food you've been eating as a child how much traveling you did, how your emotional well-being was as a child and moving into adult, adulthood, what sort of life you've led? What's your lifestyle like? What sort of food are you eating? Are you eating the right foods for your type? Are you going against the grain? Are you following a trend that's not good for you? It might be good for someone else, but not for you. A lot of people go, oh, I'm doing raw. I must be so healthy. No, you might not be healthy because raw diets certainly don't work for me because I've already got cold, slow digestion. If I eat a raw diet, I actually find that I have lots of, lots of digestive issues, pain and constipation, because I can't digest raw food. I don't have the power. Therefore, raw food for me is no good. But my friend, who's very heated and um, a bit more fiery, she's great on a raw diet. Unfortunately, in, in our age, we have lots of crazes, you know, the banana diet, the this diet, the that diet, the vegan diet, the keto diet, the paleo diet. Whew, it's very exhausting, but people just do it because it's fashionable. They don't do it because it's right for them. Well, don't forget the grapefruit and peanut butter diet. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. One tablespoon of peanut butter and a grapefruit every morning is going to make you lose weight. <laughs> Rubbish. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a, it seems like it's very in-depth. I mean, you really, you know, is it is it trial and error? Do you do you get, do you sometimes have to play around with it a little bit to determine yeah. what works for you? Yeah, you, 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 you need to understand where the imbalances are and then you you treat it along the way because bringing something back into balance takes time. And I, I, often, I often equate it to a, a plant in a pot, right? So it, it's sitting in the pot and you need to have the right amount of earth to keep it stable, the solidity, right? The right amount of solidity. And then you need to have the right amount of water because too much water will make it waterlogged or not enough water will probably kill it. <laughs> it needs to have light sunlight most plants need to have sunlight but if it's in a burning hot sun that particular plant might not do well in the burning hot sun in which case it will get frazzled and of course it needs air and of course it needs room to move and it's very similar in the human body the human body needs a certain amount of fat not too much not too little it needs good circulation circulation it needs enough hydration it needs enough warmth enough stomach acid but not too much Obviously, you need air, you need to breathe well, and you need space. And that's how Ayurveda works uh, in the five elements. When you, when you coach somebody, let me ask you a quick question. When you coach somebody, do you, um, do you do the exercise and the nutrition and the, like, all of it, or do you just take parts of it? I do. Basically, I work Ayurvedically with someone, so I would talk about I would talk about their diet, obviously, Ayurvedically, to, according to their constitutional type. I will work with their uh, emotional, mental stability, as in mental um, resilience. Um, I will work with their physical being, so opening up the energy channel, so stretching, be some yoga. 
and also work uh, philosophically with them and involve or bring in some yogic philosophy because it's very, very, very commonsensical. And it makes a lot of sense that in order to be calm, the mind needs to be calm. So how do we bring the mind, how do we make the mind calm? Well, we have to think about the space, the ambiance, the lifestyle, what you're eating, when you're eating, how you're eating, the people you surround yourself with, There's lots of elements that are involved in bringing someone back into balance. There was a question that came in quite interesting. Um, would you suggest removing pharmaceuticals that have been prescribed by your physician? I will not, I will never tell someone that they don't, shouldn't take this and shouldn't take that because I'm not a doctor. I might suggest that they go and check with the doctor because what often happens is people get left on medication. They might have been on something for years and you think, did you know that? I spoke to someone just the other day and they were telling me what they were taking. And I said, well, did you know that was an antidepressant? They didn't, they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But they were still mm -hmm. taking it and still taking it and still taking it. So my advice would be, what is it you're taking? You can talk to the doctor about what you're doing and you, know, you might be able to wean yourself off, especially if it was something like sleeping pills. But I would never say, no, stop sleeping pills and do my thing. No, I wouldn't do that. I'm not qualified to say, don't take that medication. My, my method is about bringing you back into balance so that you are able to review the amount of medication that you're taking and hopefully come off, especially sleeping pills, obviously, but you can't just stop taking sleeping pills because that would mess up your nervous system. You have to do things very gradually. There's another great question that just came in. Um, can you touch on sleep disturbance with women perimenopause? Yeah. And what do you recommend? Okay, so that, of menopause, the way that we approach menopause uh, as, uh, as women in Ayurveda is relating to the constitutional type. Some women experience a lot of hot flushes, others don't. For example, I never had a hot flush, but then my natural constitution is cold. I'm always cold, very, very, very hot. Therefore, I was so lucky and I didn't actually have the experience of loads of hot flushes. Someone who's of a, of a more heating type of constitution, they may well suffer more from hot flushes as an example. So we would need to look at some herbs, cooling herbs, looking at, looking at food. Uh, those are the two main things, looking at food and herbs and also lifestyle as well, to keep the nervous system in control. Because when you're very stressed out, that also create it for that type, it will create a lot of heat. We have to just review everything that's going on with that person, food, lifestyle, herbs, you know, not, not loads of supplements necessarily, but certainly have a look at, there's lots of different herbs, but you can't just rely on herbs. You have to look at the whole thing. But there are, certain, there are lots of things ayurvedically that you can do that will help uh, with menopause, perimenopause. Yeah. Are there any specific um, herbs that you, you say herbs, I say herbs, but that's okay, um, that, <laughs> that, that um, you would recommend for sleep time? I mean, we've heard of chamomile and valerian root. Yeah, there are lots. I mean, all those things that there are out there, you know, there's, there's, you know, cherry juice, there's the tryptophan, melatonin, uh, yes, chamomile, all those sorts of things. But that's all very well. But if you're going to just go and do some valerian, but not change anything about your lifestyle, anything about your diet, anything about the way that you think, it's not going to work. You have to treat it, obviously these things help in conjunction with, in, in, in addition to, but just taking a few valerian is probably not going to actually resolve a sleep issue. You have to look at the whole thing. And also it would depend on, you know, what's going on because, you know, it might be some people go, oh, I've been taking melatonin. I think, well, fine. 
let's have a look. Maybe we need to do a melatonin test to see if your melatonin is out of sync because it may not be. It may be something completely different. And you're popping three milligrams of melatonin and actually you don't know if you are low in melatonin. You, you don't know if that's the problem. Melatonin levels do drop as you get older anyway. Uh, and melatonin is not just something that aids your body to get ready to go to sleep. It's also a massive antioxidant it helps with bone health and all sorts of things so it's not just a thing that helps you your body go to sleep it's not actually the thing that sends you to sleep it's actually the thing that prepares your body for sleep you, you know actually i I've, I've read a lot about um the dangers of melatonin now because people are just taking it and it, it's a hormone that we produce it's not it's you know i i it should, i don't think it should just be popped randomly you know, uh, it is sold over the counter, but which is kind of crazy. Well, certainly I noticed that in the US, it's not in the UK as much where you can't buy it in the UK like that, but you can get 10 milligrams uh, in, in the US and people will go, yeah, I love the strongest, love <laughs> 10 milligrams, but that's, that's, you know, that's very high. Uh, start small, uh, but really work out what the problem is first. That's what I do. It's what is the problem? If you're over 50, you're having sleep issues and there aren't that many things that we can identify, it might be worth trying some melatonin for a while, see if that makes a difference in conjunction with other things. It may well. You know, personally, I do take melatonin because I do find it helps. Yeah. And, you know, I'm over 50. So, yeah, but I don't take 10, <laughs> I take milligrams, 10 milligrams. But the key is to work out what the problem is before you start popping stuff. Exactly. Um, you have a couple of more questions coming in, so I'm just going to keep keep giving Go them to you. It. Okay. <laughs> um, does Ayurveda help people sleep who have physical barriers to sleep, such as um, colonoscopies? Uh, you know, colo colo I'm sorry, I can't even say the word. Um, missing body parts amputees things okay. like that okay uh, i would say the thing is is that if you're in pain and you the pain is waking you up you have to address the pain depending on what it is ayurveda again it depends on where the pain's coming from so any amount of melatonin or tryptophan or you know anything like that if you're if you've got pain in bed when you're moving around you need to work out what's going on there no amount of herbs are going to just get rid of pain depending on what it is of course turmeric can help inflammation those sorts of things but again it depends on what kind of inflammation so i would say if it's emotional because you you know i mean let's say you've lost a limb i mean that's a massive emotional thing which will probably keep you awake um so emotional issues will definitely keep you awake and pain will keep you awake you have to work out deal with those and then come back to the you know to the other things great great um yeah it's a it's a whole picture i mean it's just not it's it's a it, like you said it's a balance so it is, a um, balance. is there a national website you recommend to find a practitioner in your city uh, I think you have to rely on Google for that. There are some websites, but they're usually biased. So you might have a website that has practitioners, let's say for cognitive behavioral therapy, insomnia, CBTI, and they'll have they'll be just biased to CBTI. But right. I think you need to just Google and then work and then do a short list. And be careful that they're not all biased because there's a lot of websites that have lists of practitioners. They may well be just biased in that particular type of therapy. Uh, but if you've decided you want to do CBTI, then yeah, have a look at CBTI. Um, For those website. that don't know, CBTI is cognitive behavior therapy. Or insomnia. Um, yes, or insomnia. For insomnia. So and it's, that's... It's, uh, it's very much around um, sleep hygiene and that sort of thing. Personally, I think it's quite limited, whereas Ayurveda is very, very broad. 
very broad. It does take in all those things that they they talk about, but all the other things as well. So I think, of course, I'm biased because I'm I'm, I'm a Vedic uh, person, but I can just see how broad and how beautiful it is and how it just takes in absolutely everything. Whereas everything else seems to be very, very limited. Whereas Ayurveda is really beautiful and broad and looks at everything. How, um, how does Ayurveda feel about um, CBD oils and uh, cannabis? I would think, uh, well, personally, I think it's great, CBD oil. I mean, it's something that nature has given us and nature knows best. Nature has given us all sorts of things for us to use, not abuse necessarily. So I think CBD oil, if you look at all the research, there's some fantastic research about CBD oil, and I don't think it can do you any harm. And cannabis to too? Yeah, to be, to be honest, yeah. yeah. I mean, cannabis, they have done so much research. It's only the pharmaceutical industry that doesn't really want to actually explore that because they're not going to make so much money, are they? Sorry, but it's true. And well, they won't get me on the other subject, but yeah, I think that there's a lot of stuff in nature that they have tried to control and that it, it, things like even mel melatonin. Yeah, there is research on melatonin and there's a really wonderful paper. I think I can't remember what her name is now. Um, but if anyone, if someone wants to know more, more about research on melatonin, I can give you a paper. I'd have to, I have to find it, but just reach out to me. I can give it to you. There is research on melatonin, but in the UK, they won't give you melatonin unless you're over 50, uh, because well, it just seems to be completely ridiculous. <clears throat> uh, but they would rather give you, but I've had clients, I had a client the other day, well, a few months ago, 18 years old, who was put on antidepressants and sleeping pills because he had a girlfriend problem and he wasn't sleeping. And at 40, he was still on them. You can imagine an 18 year old being put on that stuff and he's still on them at 40 because actually now he's completely dependent. His nervous system is completely all over the place. And yeah, so why, why would you not give, you know, help someone calm down with a bit of CBD oil rather than a drug? Much better. Okay, good. <laughs> they won't do that, will they? Because it doesn't, it's not very profitable. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, is there any uh, one piece of advice that you'd give our listeners today about how to sleep better? Yeah, work out if you're not sleeping very well, work out, go back, find out why do you think that is. If you ask yourself, you know, what am I doing with my lifestyle? Could it have been triggered by something that's just started to manifest and kept going? Ask yourself what the root cause is. I do have a quiz on my website, which uh, Ruth can share under the video on the recording or send it round. Um, and you can find out what type you might be because everyone's a different constitutional type. And if you do the quiz, then it will spit out a little report that gives you tips for your type. And that's a good place to, that's a good place to start. What do you need? Because we need different things in life, different amounts of just about everything. I need much more rest and much more sleep than someone who's more of a heating type person. I can't keep up with them. It's not that there's something wrong with me. If I try to and keep that lifestyle going, I won't sleep because it's too manic for me. I need space, I need grounding, I need grounding foods, and I need to have a rhythm and a ritual because otherwise I don't sleep. So I know what I need. So understanding what you need and what your constitu constitutional type, because Ayurveda believes in giving you the knowledge for you to heal yourself. So we will give you the seeds and the water, sunshine and love has to come from you. So it's an educational thing. I don't want you to be reliant on me for the rest of your life to give you drugs. I want to give you the tools so that you can heal yourself and you can, and you don't need loads of drugs to do so. so. This, was, this was an awesome talk. I think we're getting close to um, 
the end of our time um, here. Are there any other questions? Uh, I don't see any others coming in. Um, so I think we might just, um, what, I'll, what I'd like to say is I'm going to definitely post your information on the sleep forum. Um, I, I wanna thank you so much Anandi for your time today. I really learned a lot today and I'm pumped. I'm like ready to, to do this, you know? <laughs> I no, I mean it. I mean it. Like I, 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 you know, I keep saying I'm gonna do it. You're gonna, I'm gonna do it. But you are, you're a real inspiration. I, I oh, love the way you talk, you. and I, I just, I just love speaking with you. And I'm thank so you. glad that we know each other. Um, thanks again. I'm definitely gonna be in touch. I need you. Um, yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Although I run the sleep forum, I'm still, you know, I also, I work on my sleep all the time. Um, it's something that's that's awesome. a constant, constant work in progress is my sleep. It's, so. it's fun to, it, I think everything, I think if you look at the order in which you need things for your health and well-being, obviously, if you're not breathing, you're dead, right? And you need to drink water. After that, I would say sleep and then food in that order. Because sleep is fundamental to every single organ of your body. Not one organ of your body will not benefit from a good night's sleep. And actually, there is such a thing as fatal insomnia. If you look that up, you'll find that it actually will kill you. <laughs> um, so you, your body and your brain need sleep and you can't be healthy without it. You can go to the gym, you can eat as many health foods as you like. But if you're not sleeping, you need to prioritize sleep. That's right. That's right. That that's why I started the sleep forum. That's is to spread the word on how important sleep is. Um, yeah. Always a work in progress, though. But thanks again. I, I I really appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody who's come on the sleep forum show today. Um, we will be posting this information for everybody to read and to listen to. So okay. with that, I'm going to say see you soon, and I'll be in see touch, um, and we can start working on me. Okay, yes. Exactly. Everyone's got to work on everyone. Everyone's got to work on oneself. That's right. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Bye, all. Bye.